Do you know you can play almost the exact same line against the Kara Khan and Scandinavian defense? Almost. Light squares, are you selling snake oil again? No, I'm not here for likes and subscribers. I'm here to broaden your knowledge of the game. And so after e4, d5, you know what this is? The Scandinavian defense. And after e4, c6, you know what this is? The Kara Khan defense, impenetrable. You're going to be here 150 moose. I propose that in this position, e4, d5, you go ahead and play the Black Mar D Mar Gambit. You're like, whoa, whoa, whoa. Black Mar D Mar Gambit, that's some d4 opening. Yeah, yeah. It's associated with d4. So after d4, d5, so all you d4 players out there, you'll still be interested in this video. We play the move e4, and this is the Black Mar D Mar Gambit. Of course, if you are playing e4 and you're facing the Scandinavian defense, you can go ahead and transpose into that position by playing the move d4 in this position. And here, the most principled thing for black to do is to take on e4. And if you open up the Masters database, top players play this a little bit. They're going to play knight c3 for reasons I'll explain later. But for now, if you're feeling adventurous, you can play f3. And we have e takes f3, knight takes f3. And now the most popular move in the lead chess database is knight f6. We go with bishop c4. And the holy grail for people playing this opening is if black goes ahead and plays this move bishop g4. And of course, in this position, you know how to win this game. You go ahead and play this move knight to e5. And if we open up my favorite thing in the whole wide world, the lead chess database, you can see that this position has been reached 18,000 times. And the most popular move here was bishop takes d1. 7,500 games, more than that, just proceeded with people taking the queen. And of course, they can't do that because after bishop takes d1, you know what to do? Play the top engine move, bishop takes f7. No, man, there's a better move here. It's just to sit there and wait. Give them a false sense of hope that maybe you've missed it. Maybe you're going to take the bishop. That is an appalling way to behave, light squares. Just deliver checkmate here on f7 and say GG. Okay, mother, let's do that. And so even if black sees the mate and plays bishop e6, after bishop takes e6, f takes e6, there are these horrible double isolated pawns in the center. The engine hates that. You can target that towards an endgame. And if you turn on the engine, white is in a completely winning position. There is an alternative way to punish this bishop g4 mistake, which is just to go ahead and play this move. Bishop takes f2, f7, excuse me, check. King takes f7, 95, check. The king retreats. And now we get our bishop back here by taking on g4. If you turn on the engine, white is in a winning position. And you'll be like, whoa, 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 light squares. That's great, but um, how do you do that in a Karo Khan? Okay, let me show you. After e4, c6, d4, d5, mainline stuff, knight c3, they're going to take here on e4, and you could take, and then they play knight f6 or bishop f5, all boring stuff. Instead, you can just play this move f3, gambit a pawn, and now we have e takes f3, knight takes f3, knight f6, and now bishop c4. And of course, the losing mistake is bishop g4. And you can do the same thing as before, play knight e5, threaten mates here on f7. They can't take the queen. However, you look in the lead chess database, many do. And so the only difference between this position and the position before is that there is a pawn here on c6 and the knight is out on c3, which does make a difference if you actually study the lines. And I'll go into a bit of that later. And so you'll be like, mm, I'm not sure about this light squares. This is just hope chess after e4, d5, d4 takes, f3 takes, knight takes, f3, knight f6, bishop c4. You're just hoping they're going to play this move, bishop g4. Okay, so if you go into the lead chess database, that is the second most popular move in the database. However, what I found amazing about this position is that all the top five moves here in the database can actually lead to trouble here for players with the black pieces. And I'm going to explain how. So I'm going to go through... Briefly, e6, knight, uh, bishop g4, we've been through, knight c6, bishop f5, g6, and show you how black can get into uh, trouble if black is not uh, paying attention. Okay, and so after e6, much of black's advantage has been eroded. So if you turn on the engine, black had something like a minus one advantage, but that's getting closer to zero now. And it's because black's position has become very passive. The light square bishop is hemmed in. White's pieces are very active. Maybe you're going to castle. Maybe you're going to have a rook here on f1. And one of the ways to put this position under pressure is to play this move queen e2. And what that does is it exploits this pin and helps you to gain control over this d5 square. And so e6 is the most popular move in this position. However, if your opponent plays e6, well, you've already got a positional gain out of playing this line against the Scandinavian or the Kara Khan. And so the top engine move in this position is actually to play bishop f5. And what I find really interesting about this top engine move 
is that even this leads to trouble here for players with the black pieces if they're not paying attention. Because after knight e5, there is a double attack here on this f7 square. So they played a move e6. And by the way, knight to e5 is a top engine move. Here, you can just go ahead and castle. And what players in the lead chess database haven't realized is that this bishop is hanging. But I'm sure you realized it. And so what well, the most popular move here in the database is bishop d6, which is a blunder because after rook takes f5, e takes f5, knight takes f7, the queen's got a move. We have knight takes h8. White gets the rook back, but has stolen a bishop in the process. And of course, this knight is not trapped here in the corner because it can move back to f7. Of course, the queen cannot engage here on this f7 square. And you'll see that if you turn on the lead chess database in this position, it's been reached almost 4,000 times and only 900 people found the correct move, which is bishop g6, understanding that that bishop was hanging. And many of the other moves just result in the bishop being lost. So, for example, after knight b to d7, which is the third most popular move, you can just take the bishop. And if black realizes the tactic here on f7, decides to take the knight, well, of course, you're just going to take the knight. You're just off a free piece. Okay. And so it was really interesting to me to see that this bishop on f5 is vulnerable. And if you're playing something like 5-minute blitz, 10-minute rapid, then players are not going to even notice that. Okay. And so another move in this position is knight to c6. And here you can just develop knight to c3. Bishop g4 is very popular. And here you can go with the top engine move e5. And now this position, I can tell you, in the Lee Chess database has been reached some 8,000 times almost, 7,500 times. And more than 50% of people went with the move knight e5, which is very, very intuitive. Right? Put a double attack here on this f3 knight. It's, of course, pinned. And so... Many of us would play that in a heartbeat, but this actually loses the game. And so you want to pause the video and work out the winning tactic here for white. Well done if you did. You're obviously doing your tactics puzzles the whole time. The winning move here is knight takes e5. That's just a free piece. And you're like, light squares, whoa, whoa, what's this? Bishop takes d1. There's no mate here. Don't worry, you're going to get your queen back. Relax, guys. After bishop b5, check. Are you going to deal with this check? Knight to d7. Okay. Bishop takes d7, check. Queen takes, only legal move, we get the queen back. And of course, if the king takes, we're going to take this bishop. You count the material, white is up, material, white is winning. If in this position, bishop takes c2, fine. Knight takes f8, rook takes f8, count the material, white is winning. And if you turn on the engine, it's about plus 3, plus 4. Alternatively, after bishop b5, check. You could try c6, and we take. And of course, we're going to win the queen anyway in this position. Black could try something with a6. And now we have c7, that's check. And of course, we're going to pick up the queen. And if you calculate, go through the exchange here, you'll find that white is in a completely winning position. And so this very intuitive move, knight to e5, is just a losing mistake. And I suspect many players with the white pieces don't even realize that they can just go ahead and take this knight. Okay. And the fifth most popular move in the lead chess database is g6 in this position. And now black's advantage has gone. So it was minus one, now it's zero. And the reason is that this f6 knight becomes a target. After knight e5, there's a target, there's an attack here on this f7 square. And now the engine wants you to play bishop e6 because after bishop takes e6, let's say f takes e6, at least the knight is guarded by a pawn. But I think what most human players are going to do is they're going to play this move e6. And now rook f1 is stronger than castling. For some reason, you can look into that. And let's say you follow out some intuitive moves here. Let's say, let's say bishop g7, bishop g5, and this knight is double attacked. Uh, it is de defended twice for the moment. However, this is going to become a massive problem if they castle because now you have queen f3. And now it's triple attack. They can't move. There's a pin. So they try to triple defend it. That doesn't work because of knight takes d7. They can't take with the knight. So you have bishop takes d7. And of course, bishop takes f6, wins the game, wins a piece. And so if we return back to this position and switch on the lead chess database, what I've basically done is I've gone through all the popular moves here. e6, bishop g4, which we know is a losing mistake. Knight c6, bishop f5, which is the top engine move, g6. And shown you how if black doesn't know what it's doing, Black is going to get into a lot of trouble. And all of this exists apart from knight c6 in the Kara Khan line. So if we go to the Kara Khan stuff, the e4, c6, d4, e5, knight c3, takes, f3, takes, 
knight takes f3, knight f6, bishop c4, and we go into the Lee chess database. Of course, there's a pawn here on c6, so there's no knight c6 line here. However, many of the same ideas apply as before. So, for example, with e6, you can try things like queen e2 and, and try to exploit black's very passive position. And with bishop f5, you can try and target that bishop g6, similar to above. It's worth noting with bishop f5 here, which is the top engine move, there is an additional thing to try. And so here, top engine move, bishop f5, go knight e5, e6. And now instead of putting a rook here on f1 or castling, you have this move g4. And this wasn't available to you in the Scandinavian because there was no knight on c3. And so here, they move back, we go h4, threaten to trap this bishop. And let's say they go to e4. Many players are going to do this. Many players do do that in the Leech database. And now we have knight takes e4, knight takes e4, and we have the spectacular winning move, knight takes f7. And after king takes f7, we have queen f3 check. And how are you going to deal with this? Okay, you could go back, but of course, we're going to play g5, and black's going to be like, no, no, everything's fine. I'm just going to take this pawn, and then I'm going to take this bishop. Doesn't work. Because after g takes f6, queen takes c4, we have f takes g7 and this king has got to move out of the way and allow you to queen and grab the rook in the process if they decide to take the pawn here on g7 you know how to win this game simple mating two do tactics puzzle the whole time you've seen this you have rook g1 check and now the queen's got to get in the way no one's going to do that everyone's just going to hit the resign button and we have rook takes g4 check mate okay so you say something like that's interesting but at the end of the day, this is just a losing gambit. It's e4, d5, d4. You're just giving away free pawns. Stockfish says it's minus one. That's true. Black plays accurately. Black is just upper pawn. However, my position on gambits has softened over the three years that I've been playing chess for the simple reason that I'm just observing top players playing dubious lines, playing gambits, particularly under fast time controls, and just knowing it so well, knowing it to such a great level of depth that they can turn around the deficit. And to kind of illustrate this to you, if we put, say, something like the Stafford Gambit on the screen, after e4, e5, knight f3, knight f6, knight takes e5, knight c6, the Stafford Gambit, and we go into the Lee Chess database. And what I've done is I've just looked through Eric Rosen's stats here playing this. So Eric Rosen is black here, you should see on your screen. You can see he's played this 1,000 times. And this is just a completely winning position here for players with the white pieces, plus two, plus two and a half on the engine. And yet he's winning the vast majority of games. And even after, say, something like knight takes c6, you can see his win percentage, which is the correct move. His win percentage is very good. And his average opponent rating is about 2,300. So these are not beginners. These are, these are decent players. And the reason is that he just understands this gambit to a greater and greater level of depth. So after, say, knight takes c6, d takes c6, d3, bishop c5. Okay, he's only faced bishop g5 10 times out of the 400 times he's seen this position. However, if you go through what he goes through in his game, so after say bishop b2, which is a top move, he goes and plays h5, c3 is a top move, then he plays knight g4, d4 is a top move, now he plays queen h4. And even if you turn on the end, uh, the Lee chess database in this position, you can see that he's played this position 50 times and won the vast majority of games, despite the fact that it being like plus three on the engine. And so my point here is that, sure, these gambits can be dubious, e4, d5, d4, black man, d man, gambit is technically losing by the engine. However, if you're willing to get beyond the superficial stuff, the superficial traps, and study it to a greater level of depth, you can turn around the entire deficit. One word of warning before you go is that after d takes e4, f3 is not the best move here. You need to play this move knight c3 if you're going to play this properly. Uh, and there is a reason for that. Because in this position after f3, Although black is still winning after e takes f3, there is a stronger move here, which is just e5. And in this position, white cannot take, because if you take, white loses because of queen h4 check. If you play g3, then you're just going to have takes on e4 and then pick up the rook. So taking here on e4 is out of the question. And you also have to note that your d4 pawn is hanging. If you play knight to e2, then you have takes, takes, queen h4, check again. And in this position, black is completely winning. It's about minus three minus four and so what the engine wants you to do is just to take here on e5 and now you're going to have a queenless middle game okay material is equal knight c6 hitting the pawn bishop f4 but for some reason if you turn on the engine it is about minus one and a half again 
if you're willing to understand this to a greater level of depth, you can turn this around. Okay, so there you go. A line to try against the Scandinavian and Kara Khan defense. And it has an obvious benefit that you don't have to study all the theory around the Kara Khan or the Scandinavian. You can just go for a similar setup with a knight, hopefully on f3, a bishop on c4. And I demonstrated that many of the popular responses here from white, including the top engine moves from black, excuse me, can result in a lot of trouble. Thank you very much for your time.